Hey guys, I wanted to talk about electrical systems today. I'm gonna to compare in this video using some Renogy components versus Victron. If you've watched any of our videos, you know we're big Victron fans, we use a lot of them, but we have used Renogy in the past a couple of times. Um, it can save you a little bit of money and they're actually pretty convenient and good products. So I'm just gonna talk about the pros and cons of each. We're doing two vans right now. Uh, one is gonna have this Renogy system one is going to have the Victron. Now you can see here there's a Victron inverter charger and I'll talk about there are some Victron products that we're going to use in this build and I'll talk about why we do that in a few minutes. So if you're looking at electrical systems for your camper or RV then this video is definitely for you. Now we recently have come out with three different trim levels of our builds. Uh, we've got the Prime, the Premium, and the Platinum. And if you've watched many of our videos most of our van builds have been that prime level but we've added a lower tier and also a higher tier now this van is the lower tier and we call this our prime and one of the areas where we save some money we're not really i wouldn't i don't like to say cutting costs because we're not using cheap inferior products it's just a little bit uh smaller system, not as much capacity in the batteries, the solar, the inverter, um, but I'm gonna talk about the differences here. So you can see right here, we're using a Renogy DC to DC charger with MPPT. So what does that mean? That means it's gonna take the power from your alternator when you're driving your vehicle and it's gonna charge your batteries. And the MPPT part is your solar charge controller. So it's also gonna do that. Now this is capable of 50 amps. So it can take 50 amps from your starter battery on your vehicle and put it into your house battery bank in your uh, van or RV. It also can take 50 amps, up to 50 amps in solar and put it in. Now, a big question people ask is, will it combine those two and give me 50 amps of solar and 50 amps of alternator charging? And the answer to that is no. If you're alternator charging and you're getting 50 amps and you start getting solar, it's gonna combine the two in the best way that uh, it finds possible and it's gonna give you a maximum of 50 amps. So you're not gonna be able to get that combination of the two. But 50 amps out of your alternator is pretty good. Now one thing that's nice about this system is it's pretty inexpensive. I think it's, a, it's, a, I think it's around $300. The hookups are pretty easy. You, you just run a positive wire from your vehicle starter battery to the unit and then a positive from your solar panels to this unit and then you're going to use a common ground over here so all of the grounds are going to go here and then you're going to have a, a output here that's going to go to your batteries to charge them now as far as monitoring we're going to be using this renogy shunt uh, now this shunt, um, we often use the uh, Victron Smart Shunt, which has Bluetooth built-ins, so you can monitor it from your phone. With the Renogy system, you have to add a Bluetooth module, so that's what this is. Not really expensive, I think this is around $50. Um, and then you can, you can monitor, they have uh, what they call the Renogy One, which is a screen that gives you information on your system doesn't have nearly the capacity of the Serbo GX. I would compare it more to the um, Victron Smart BMV 712. Um, kind of gives you that same information. And actually the screen gives you, is, is a little bit nicer and bigger than that BMV 712. And so um, it's, a, it's a pretty good monitoring system. So let me talk about the inverter and why we went with this. This is the Victron MultiPlus Compact. This is a 2000 watt inverter. We typically use the, t the regular MultiPlus, which is a 3000 watt inverter. And so this one has a little bit less capacity. Um, it's smaller um, as far as the thickness of it, but it's actually longer. So with the uh, regular MultiPlus, we're able to stand it up here, but with this, we have to lay it down. It's best not to lay it flat. You can, but these things get pretty hot when they're operating. And with the regular MultiPlus, it has more um, vents on the side. And so if you lay it on its back, which um, we, we sometimes do just out of necessity, um, if you do that, then it still dissipates the heat pretty well. But with this one, all of the, um, the fans and, and places to release the heat are either on the back or the bottom. And so in this case, it's best not to lay this one down because that heat 
coming out of the back is going to get trapped underneath and make it really hot. And the hotter it runs, the less efficient it's going to be. So because we're running a 2,000 watt inverter, we're able to use a 300 amp um, fuse for the system. And typically with a 3,000 watt, you're going to need to use a 400 amp. So we like, these are, this is a terminal fuse that just connects to the battery. It's got this little fuse here, and then you connect your positive uh, cable coming off of this going to your system. It's nice to be able to use that terminal fuse, but these only go up to 300 amps. So when you step up to that 3,000 watt system, you've got to go to 400 amps, and then you've got to use an a &L fuse. And it's much bigger. Um, we typically would you know, mount this and then has a fuse. But with this, it's nice because you just mount it right to the battery. The other thing about a 2,000 watt inverter is it means we can use 2 watt cable versus 4 watt. And I'm not going to lie, 4 watt cable is a pain in the butt to work with. Hey, it's just, it's big, it's hard to bend, um, it, the lugs are much bigger, you got to have a bigger um, crimper to put these on, and uh, it's also the, determining the lengths of these is critical because um, you just don't have the ability to, um, you know, if you're needing to have a little bit of adjustment, you can, you can do a little bit there, like if you've got this connected and this connected, but you don't have a lot of, of flexibility in moving things around. Where with 2 watt, it's just a lot more flexible, it's a lot smaller, it's a lot easier to run. Uh, crimping is, is just easier with the smaller, the lugs are less expensive, the wires less expensive, and so it is nice to be able to use 2 watt cable, but you can only use the 2 watt in a 12 volt system if you're using a 2,000 watt inverter. Again, 3,000 watt, you gotta jump up to the 4 watt cable. Now in a 12 volt system, you got a, a fuse or circuit breaker for everything. So typically the things you're gonna connect to this is a DC fuse block where you can connect all of the different components in your van. Then you're gonna be running to your inverter, the DC inputs, the positive and negative, and that's with that two watt cable. You're gonna have another fuse for your um, alternator charge controller, and then another one for your solar charge controller. So typically we've got four that we're doing in most of our vans. The other one is you may have an air conditioner um, and you need to have a fuse or breaker for that as well. So when we go with the fuses or breakers, uh, we typically go with the breaker just because it's easier. Uh, this is Blue C and they have the surface mount, which is their 285. And then they have the, this one mounts, you cut a hole and this one mounts flush, and this is their 187 series. And both of these are great. They come in a lot of different ranges. And by the way, I'll link to everything that I'm talking about in this video in the description. The other option is you can use fuses. So you can use mega fuses with a little housing and you mount these and the fuses here. And so you could have a, one of those fuses for each of your um, different circuits that you're running off the DC side. What we like to do is use the Lynx distributor made by Victron, and you'll see that in the other electrical system that I'm going to show you. But the uh, Lynx distributor, it's 200 bucks, and when you add up all these different breakers, you're going to spend almost that much anyway, and it's just a much more elegant and clean way to organize all of your wiring, and so we really prefer that. So even though we're doing a little bit less expensive system here, we're still using that Lynx distributor, um, and that's, that, that's coming in today, so I don't have it, but that'll be mounted here, and then the wires will be going to the different circuits from that. So all the fuses go right there in the Lynx distributor, and it's just really clean. Has lights that if a fuse blows, the light comes on, you see that the fuse is blown. So. I highly recommend that regardless of whether you're going with Renogy or Victron or some other brand of components. Hey guys, do you enjoy the outdoors but planning meals has got you down? Whether it's space, weight, refrigeration, or prep, healthy, quick, and easy delicious meals can be a real challenge. More and more people are turning to Thrive Life freeze-dried meals because they're lightweight, need no refrigeration, have no preservatives, and taste amazing. Just add hot water and you've got a meal in less than 10 minutes. With breakfast, lunch, and dinner options, Thrive has got you covered. Check out the link in description for more info. This one you can see is the extruded aluminum. Uh, this is how we normally build our mechanical boxes, the electrical and the plumbing. Um, these are great because it's really easy to build these outside of the van, put everything together, and then just put it, pick it up, move it into the van, and uh, connect everything. And they're really light. 
You know, I could pick this thing up by myself and take it in, which is really nice. We'll cover this in, we'll, we'll typically use this hex, hex ply um, for the exterior of it. And we only, you can see we have a board here to mount all the components in this. But, and then we'll have a face and then covers on the ends, but we don't put the wood where we don't need it. So it's just really an easy way to build these things on the bench, having them made out of the extruded aluminum. Now we are now doing these systems um, in a drop-in version. So we will build the system here in our shop, test it, and then we'll crate it up and ship it to you. And we can do that with the electrical and the plumbing. We'll customize it to your needs. We kind of have a standard system that we do. And then if you want it customized, we'll do that. If you've got a Sprinter 144, then the, our standard size will drop right in. But if you've got a Transit or a Promaster or maybe a longer van, a 170 Sprinter that you want a longer box, we can do that as well. So you can check out our website and I will put a link uh, to the page on our website where it talks about these drop-in systems down in the description. Okay, so let's go into the other van and I'll show you the Victron system. Okay, so now I'm inside of one of our other vans that we're working on. This is a Sprinter 170. And this one you can tell is a little bit different. In fact, it's a lot different. Probably not like any other um, electrical system you've seen us do. And the reason for that is this van is gonna have a dinette. And uh, my very first van I ever built had a dinette. And so I built the electrical system into the bench um, in that one, and that's what we're doing here. So this system, our customer um, started the build, purchased pretty much all of the electrical components, and then brought them to us. And so we've used what he did. So this is a 12 volt system. Um, typically our systems, if we were running a system this big, we'd be running a, a 24 volt, um, but the customer had already bought everything for 12 volts, so that's what we're doing here. This van has 810 amp hours of batteries, a lot of batteries. So it's got three of the Battleborn Game Changer 3 um, 270 amp hour batteries. And then it's got the Victron Multi Plus 3000 watt inverter mounted right down here. And this one is on its back. Um, and that's because it just won't really fit any other way. It would fit standing upright, but you wouldn't have the room underneath to have the four out cables coming out of the bottom and make the turn and everything. So that one's mounted on the back. But fortunately with the Multi Plus, the venting is on the sides and the bottom. The fan, there's a fan on the bottom. And so even laying on its back, it's able to vent really well. Now, something that's kind of new in this van is that we're using the Orion XS, which is their new DC to DC charger that puts out 50 amps where the regular Orion DC, DC charger will only put out 30 amps. And so this is nice, it's a 50 amp, and then it's also quite a bit smaller, which is nice. It's, it's not as thick and it's just got a smaller footprint, so it fits in this area really nicely. Right now it does only come in 12 volt, so when we're doing a 24 volt system, we'll use two of the regular Orions to give us a total of 60 amps. But with this, 50 amps is awesome. So you could, you could do two of these, um, but you know, for most people needs one of these with 50 amps is gonna be sufficient. Moving back, we've got our Lynx distributor here. And I will say that building this thing in the van, I did install all the components, um, but a lot of the wiring I had to do once it was in the van just to make everything fit right and not be in the way of other things, be able to access the screws and everything. And it is a lot harder to build it in the van than it is on the bench. So big, if you're, if you're building an electrical system, I would highly recommend that you try to build most of it outside and then just bring it into the van. You can see we've got the ANL fuse, the 4 watt cable, because this is a 3000 watt inverter. We've got to step up to that. But like I said, the, the Lynx distributor just makes a really clean um, install. Uh, we've got our Orion going into one of the fuses. We've got the solar charge controller going into one. We've got our inverter in one, and then we've got our DC panel in the other. You can see we've put our DC panels here. This dinette will be convertible into a bed, and so there will actually be on the driver's side where all of the plumbing components are, that side's gonna fold over, rest on a cleat here to make a king size bed. And so to have easy access to all these components, we'll just have a lift up right here where you can get at your DC fuses and your AC breakers. So we've installed all that right there. So which system should you go with? You know, they're both good systems. I, I feel like the Victron gives you just a little bit more flexibility in mounting the different components. 
in the sizing, if you want a bigger solar, solar charge controller, or if you want to go with two of the um, DC to DC charge controllers so that you can double the input you're getting from your starter battery and alternator, then it's really nice that way because you can, you can scale this system to whatever you need. Also, I really like the monitoring with the Victron system using the Serbo GX and the touch screen. So with the Serbo GX, you just get a lot better information on your screen. You're gonna be able to get your tank levels. You're gonna be able to program things, turn on and off your inverter charger. So there's just a lot of nice things that this gives you. Also the Bluetooth app with Victron gives you a lot more flexibility, programming ability and um, information, better information than what you get from the Renogy app. So for monitoring, I really prefer the Victron system, the Serbo GX with the touchscreen. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can go with the BMB 712, which is quite a bit less money. You're going to save maybe, I don't know, three or $400 if you go that route. The information on the screen, the BMB 712, it's basically unusable for me because I can't even see it. It's a grayed out uh, text and it's very small and it's clunky to program, but you can do everything on the phone app that you can do on that. So for me, if I have the BMV 712, I'm not even using it. I'm using the app for everything. But if you want to have a graphical interface where you can see everything, um, you can do that with the Renogy One or with the Serbo GX, but I really prefer the Serbo GX. Okay, so like I mentioned, this um, on, our, on our prime level, uh, we're using the SOK batteries. And these are great batteries. We've used them on a few different builds and I really like them. And they're really quite inexpensive. They're, this one is 206 amp hours each. Uh, so two of them that we're gonna put in this will give us a total of 412 amp hours, which is a nice uh, size for a system. Um, on our higher level systems, we'll either use the SOK 280 amp hour which gives you a total of 560 amp hours if you use two of those, or we'll use the Battleborn 270 amp hour where two of those gives you 540 amp hours. So very similar, but cost-wise, I think these SOKs, two of them is gonna be about $1,200, and two of the Battleborns is gonna be 47, 4,800, close to $5,000. So big, big difference in the cost. And some of these other batteries have come a long way. And, uh, you know, Battleborn is great. We love working with them. We love using their batteries, but nothing wrong with going with these SOKs or, you know, there's some others out on the market that are really good as well. Now they do come with a couple different versions of these batteries. This one is the Marine battery. So the metal case is nice and these handles are nice for strapping these down. Um, you know, it has uh, 516 studs, which are nice. So yeah, this is a really nice battery setup for really not a lot of money. So you can see those fit really nicely here. We'll do a strap from the floor over and to the other side to secure them. Now, a couple other things about these batteries, you can buy a heated version, um, which has an internal heater that will keep these from freezing so they can operate in um, sub-freezing temperatures. Now these have an internal BMS, just like the uh, Battleborn batteries. But one thing these do have is they've got Bluetooth built in, and so you can monitor these from the SOK app um, to get information on your battery, which again is something that's really nice. So I'd love to hear what you think. Would you go with something a little bit scaled down version like this, uh, with a little bit less expensive batteries? You know, this system compared to the one in the other van is gonna save you about $4,000. Um, would you go with something like that in your van or would you go with the full Monty and go with the full Battleborn and Victron system? Let me know down below. Now, if you're interested in camper vans or van life, we've got a ton of videos on our channel about uh, van travel, van life, uh, DIY building helps and tips, a lot of videos on what we do, what we use and how we do it. So if you'd like to check out another video, you can tap or click the screen. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos and be sure to smash that like button. Jeff with Thrive Vans, drive on. See ya.